Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope everybody's doing well. Well, we're only a few weeks away from Valentine's Day, so we need to think about making some jewelry for that special day. And I know how busy things can get. Before you know it, Valentine's Day will be here. But don't worry, because today I'm gonna to show you how to make a very simple necklace. It's simple, but it's very elegant and perfect for Valentine's Day. As you can see, it features a really pretty rose connector with a little heart charm hanging down and some lovely red colored beads. And I'm gonna be using the beads that came in the curated bead box for the month of February. Now, if you're not familiar with that box, I'll leave some information down below in the description section of this video, along with a link to the website and a coupon code in case you're interested. And if you missed out on getting this box, don't worry because I'll leave a list of all the materials down below as well. And don't forget that I always model my necklaces at the end of my videos. So please stick around for that. So let's go ahead and get started. And here we have the curated bee box for the month of February 2024. The name of this box is Pure Passion. And as you can see, it contained Valentine's Day items. There were lots of red colored beads and silver beads and other complimentary beads. And I really loved the heart pendant, but I couldn't resist the rose connectors or the rose links. When I first saw them, I knew I had to use them. And if you haven't seen the unboxing video, I'll link it down below. So let's go over the materials I'll be using today. Here are the items we're gonna be using from the box. I'll be using some other items from my stash, but we'll go over those in just a few moments. As you can see, I have the rose link. I have some six millimeter size beads. I have this glass oval bead and I have this little charm. We're gonna use it at the back of the necklace, hanging down from an extended chain. It's a little bit larger than I prefer for that type of thing, but I think it'll look just fine. But let me go over these items with you. This link measures 25 by 16 millimeters. Let me show it to you. It's really pretty. The only thing I don't like about this is that it's hollow in the back, but I have a solution for that. I'm gonna be creating some beaded components and I'm gonna connect them a certain way so that this link doesn't flip around because you don't want the back showing. And I love the color of these beads. The only problem is that most of them have the finish missing from around the hole. And it's a real shame because I really love that shade of red, but I have a solution for that. I'm basically gonna be covering it up with some bead caps and I'll show you those in just a few moments. And I believe this oval bead measures eight by seven millimeters, something like that. And this charm measures 18 by five millimeters. And in addition to these items, we're also gonna be using some items from the Finding Starter Kit, which came in the box. I'm probably gonna use a clasp, some jump rings and a head pin, but I'll bring those out later on. So let me show you what else we'll be using. I have some bead caps that measure six millimeters across. I have this heart charm. I think it measures 15 by 17 millimeters, something like that. And I have some chain. The links measure three and a half by five millimeters. And if you don't have the exact items, that's okay. You can use something similar. This necklace is very easy to make. And so I encourage you to be creative and put your own spin on it. I'm gonna be using some craft wire today. And this is 22 gauge wire. And the color is titanium. I really love this color. It's real pretty. So now that we've gone over the materials, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start by building the bottom part of the necklace. As you can see, I have my beads and my bead caps, and I also have a long piece of wire. This is the 22 gauge wire. And for this part, we're gonna build a nine inch strand. The total length of my necklace is gonna be about 18 inches, but obviously you can make yours as long as you want to. So let me show you how to do this. Using round nose pliers, I'm gonna grab the wire about an inch and a quarter down, something like that, bend it, switch to this part of the wire, wrap the tail around the nose, Flip the pliers around, continue to wrap to the back. So now I have a loop. I'm gonna grab the loop with these pliers. These are actually crimping pliers, but I like to use them because they have very skinny tips and they grab really well. And now with another set of pliers, I'm gonna grab the tail and create a couple of wraps. I usually only do two wraps, but you can do as many as you want to. So now I'm gonna cut off the excess and I'm gonna use my flush cutters. And one thing you do wanna do is to tuck that little end in 
So I'm going to grab the loop again and tuck it in with my pliers. So now let me go ahead and load a bead cap and a bead and another bead cap. These are so small, they're kind of hard to grab. It's not that they're small, they're just thin. I didn't want to use chunky bead caps. So that's what it looks like. As you can see, it covers up that hole and that's what you want. So now I'm going to grab the wire with my round nose pliers again, line up the bottom loop, bend it, switch to this part, wrap the tail around the nose, flip the pliers around, continue to wrap to the back, grab the loop with my skinny pliers, snip off the excess, grab the tail and do a couple of wraps. Cut off the excess. Tuck in whatever little sharp end you see. And I always like to line up my loops, even though I do try to do that in the beginning because sometimes I do get out of alignment, especially with small beads. So there's my first bead of component. And now let me go ahead and do another one. Once again, I'm gonna grab the wire with my round nose pliers an inch and a quarter down, bend it, switch to this part, wrap the tail around the nose of the pliers, flip the pliers around, continue to wrap to the back. And I'm gonna open up this loop Slide the beta component into it, like this. Grab the loop. Grab the tail and do a couple of wraps. Cut off the excess. Tuck in that little sharp end. Slide on a bead cap. And a bead. And another bead cap. Like that. Grab the wire with my round nose pliers. Line up the bottom loop. Bend it, switch to this part, wrap the tail around the nose, flip the pliers around, continue to wrap to the back, grab the loop, grab the tail and do a couple of wraps. Cut off the excess. Tuck in the little sharp end. Make sure your loops are lined up. And now I have two beta components connected. It's very simple. And that's how I'm going to do the entire length. And like I said, I'm going to make a length that's nine inches long. I'm not sure how many beads I'm going to use, but I'll find out in just a few moments. Sometimes the size of your loops can affect the length. So if you create small loops, obviously you'll need more beads. But anyway, I'm gonna do this off camera so the video isn't too long. And when I come back, we'll do the next step. So I'll see you in a few moments. Okay, I'm back. As you can see, I've completed my nine inch strand. I also created two little ones. They're gonna be connected at the top by the clasp and I have a piece of chain. I have my rose link and I also have a bead that I'm gonna use on the heart charm. I'm gonna create a little dangle with it. So let me give you the measurements of everything. Like I mentioned earlier, this one measures nine inches and there are 15 components total. The chain segment measures a little under seven inches. I would say probably six and three quarters to be precise. 
This strand here measures five and a quarter inches and there are nine beaded components total. And this one measures four and three quarter inches and it has eight beaded components. So now we're gonna go ahead and assemble everything. The first thing I'm gonna do is create the dangle and that's very easy to do. I'm using one of the head pins from the Finding Starter Kit. I'm gonna grab the pin right above the bead like this and bend it. And these are very tough head pins. Now I need to trim off the excess and I want my loop to be rather large. So I'm gonna trim it off at about half an inch, something like that. And now let me grab it with my round nose pliers. You wanna make sure it's flush and I'm simply gonna form a loop. You wanna make sure your loop is closed really well and you wanna make sure that it's centered on the bead as well. Let me open it up now. Slide the charm into it. I think I need to open it a little bit more. Let me try this again. There it is. And now I just need to close it. It's a little tricky because of the shape of the heart. That's basically it. Isn't that cute? It's so cute. I'm going to put it off to the side because I want to connect everything before I connect the dangle to make things easy. And I forgot to mention it earlier, but you need to have one of the beaded components open at one end because we're going to connect it to the rose link. Same thing with this shorter one. We're going to connect both of these ends to the rose link directly without a jump ring. And on the other side, we're going to use a jump ring. And this one came in the finding starter kit. It measures six millimeters. Let me go ahead and open up this jump ring. I'm gonna slide in the chain first. Just like that. And now the longest strand, and I'm sliding in the side that doesn't have the open loop. And now this one, this is the longer one out of the two. And now let me close up the jump ring. You wanna make sure it's nicely closed. So that's what we have so far. Now in order for the component to sit properly, the rose component, you wanna make sure that you connect this strand without having the beaded components all twisted up. Let me show you what I mean. You want to start at this end and this component has to have loops that are vertical just like you see here the next one's horizontal vertical horizontal vertical horizontal vertical horizontal vertical horizontal vertical i know this is tedious but it's necessary horizontal vertical horizontal, and this one's vertical. You wanna end up with one that's vertical or perpendicular to your mat. I hope that makes sense. So now I'm gonna open up this loop a little bit. And I'm gonna slide the connector through it or the link. I keep wanting to call it connector. So it sits like this. Let me close it up a little bit. And now I'm gonna create some wraps and you'll have to excuse all that noise. It's actually the piping in my ceiling. Whenever anybody runs hot water, the piping makes noise. So now I'm grabbing the loop with my skinny pliers. I normally stop filming when that happens, but I really wanna finish this tutorial today. So I apologize for that. So now I'm gonna grab the end and create some wraps. Let me cut off the excess. Tuck in the little sharp end.
So that's connected. And now we need to connect the chain. It's a good idea to lay it out like this. So it's not all twisted up. I'm actually going to use a five millimeter jump ring. This is from my stash and it's pretty thick. It's about 19 gauge, I would say. I'm going to slide the chain into it like this. And now I'm going to connect it to the rose link. Close it up. So that's what we have so far. I think it's very pretty. So now we need to connect this one here. Let me open up this loop a little bit. Slide the rose link into it. Like this. Grab it with my skinny pliers. Create my wraps. Let me straighten out my loops on this one. Cut off the excess. Tuck in the little end. So that's connected. So the only thing we need to do now is attach the charm. So let me open up this jump ring. And this charm does have a front. This is the front and this is the back. So I want to make sure that the correct side of that charm is facing the front. So I need to connect it this way. Let me close up the jump ring. That's what we have. Isn't that adorable? It's so adorable. I love it. So now we need to connect the clasp. Here are two more jump rings. Here's an extended chain. I'm going to use a small jump ring for this little charm. And by the way, the small jump rings measure five millimeters. You could definitely use a four millimeter one if you wanted to. And I think I'll trim this extended chain because I don't want it to be that long. I'm going to remove about half of it, I think. Let me open up this link. And I'm going to attach the charm to it. The Made With Love charm. Like this. And like this, close up the jump ring. Now, if you're right-handed, it's recommended that you connect the lobster clasp on the right side of the necklace, which would be this side right here. Let me open up a jump ring. And of course, if you're left-handed, they recommend that you connect it on the left side, but ultimately it's personal preference. Here's my lobster clasp. Like that. Close it up. And now I just need to connect the extended chain. So let me open up this jump ring. Slide the chain into it like this and connect the strand like that. Now 
and that's all there is to it. Pretty simple. And I love this little charm that says made with love. Isn't that cute? It's so cute. Well, here's my finished Valentine's Day necklace, and I think it's super cute. It really is. I hope you like it as well. I'm probably going to end up wearing it on Valentine's Day because Valentine's Day is actually my birthday. And by the way, I forgot to mention this strand up here is longer because obviously there's no rose component on this side. But by adding the jump ring and an extra component, it ends up being the exact same length as this one here with a component. I hope that makes sense. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. I hope you can make your own Valentine's Day necklace. As always, I'd like to go ahead and put it on for you. Thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.